Today on Toy Shiz Retro Radioactive Blood, let's talk toys. Welcome back everyone, Toy Shiz here. I am back yet again to give you guys another retro shiz-ish look back into the past with the future. And today we're totally checking out the brand new-ish Marvel Legends Spider-Man, the quote-unquote animated series, Toy Biz Revival Revisit. It's basically taking old Spider-Man, the animated series, kind of, sort of, and giving them the new Marvel Legends spit. It's not exactly Spider-Man, the animated series, all right? Just so we're all aware, we know that, but we're going to have fun today and just say Spider-Man, the animated series, because it's the closest thing with the packaging by Harry Moore Design. Please check him out on Instagram. He did a fantastic job recreating Spider-Man Toy Biz artwork, hands down, top notch, just mm, beautiful, beautiful cards on all of these. So let's jump into it with Mysterio. Very nice card art. I love the back showing all of Wave 1. We're going to call this Wave 2, even though it's kind of like an offshoot, a various fan channel exclusive wave. It's the KB wave. There you go. KB Toys wave. <laughs> wave 2 of Spider-Man the Animated Series. You get a really nice bio write-up. Cloud of Smoke heralds the arrival of the villainous mastermind who uses the art of illusion against Spider-Man. Mysterio. And yeah, that fits Spider-Man the Animated Series pretty much. And yeah, you can remove his little fishbowl helmet and you got a head underneath. Curious to see what's underneath. I honestly don't know. I, I'm assuming it's like the old one, but uh, yeah, I haven't seen it yet. And then yeah, all of the original waves, Spider-Man, Peter Parker, Green Goblin, Gwen Stacy, Daredevil, and Marvel's Electro. Don't say regular Electro. J. Jonah Jameson, he makes his Spider-Man the Animated Series debut. And yeah, he, I mean, very comic book, right? Not really animated series at all. Tough, gruff, and loud. J. Jonah Jameson is a force to be reckoned with in the boardroom and on the front pages of the Daily Bugle. As the newspaper's editor-in-chief, Jameson is a perennial thorn in the side for both Peter Parker and Spider-Man. An arrow right here, like finger pointing, yelling action, like bring me pictures of Spider-Man, like that kind of thing. That would have been cool. They, more action like that. Marvel's Black Cat, Felicia Hardy. This is the most accurate, close to the Spider-Man the Animated Series we have gotten thus far with these figures. Black Cat is the most confident, cunning burglar the world has ever seen, donning a black costume and mask. Heiress Felicia Hardy changes into her superhero persona and prowls the streets with Spider-Man at her side. Yeah, kind of animated series. We all know in the animated series she was given the super soldier formula that Captain America took and she does like some kind of Hulk power up kind of thing turns into the black cat. I, never, I didn't really like that the animated series to be honest with you, and then you have the two Target exclusives with Cyborg Spider-Man. Cyborg Spider-Man has enhanced cybernetic capabilities in addition to all the powers of the Earth-616 Spider-Man, web-singing, wall-crawling, heightened spider-senses. Villains are no match for this Spidey-advanced cyborg technology. And again, this, he's not really a cyborg. He just got injured on a mission with Deathlock, and they gave him, like, quote-unquote cybernetic parts. It's just body casts, basically, to help him recover. So... Yeah, and then you have the other target exclusive, the Negative Zone Spider-Man. And I love that he comes with Negative Zone Pizza. That is amazing. Negative Zone Suit allows him to absorb the Negative Zone's dark energy and even merge with shadows. By doing so, the wall crawler becomes practically invisible and has a major advantage against his enemies. But wait, you're saying they didn't make a Negative Zone Spider-Man in the Toy Biz era? I got a surprise for you coming. And then Marvel's Kingpin. Now, this is the big mamma jamma card back. This card is huge. Wilson Fisk ruthlessly rules New York City's underworld with a cunning and a keen intellect. Yeah, and then you can see that, you know, you can change his head from beat up to uh, regular Fisk. This is going to be fun. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice, hot, neogenic recombinator cup of coffee. This is a look at the brand new KB Toys. Huh? Wink, wink. Spider-Man, the animated series, quote unquote, wave two Spider-Man retro figures by Hasbro. We're going to kick things off with Wilson Fisk, the kingpin, and he's sporting a very 70s comic book look very much orange purples with this guy with a white jacket same figure as that was released as to build a figure some time ago and he does come with a more beat up head black guy cuts and scrapes it looks pretty good i can't complain but i like the cane and i just like this very cool 70s 
look for the Kingpin. In comparison to the old Toy Biz figure, now the Toy Biz one does have the look of the cartoon show through and through. So in that sense, he's great. Little pinhead, big muscle guy. Whereas this Kingpin, yeah, he's sporting the, the 70s look. But if you didn't know, check this out. For the original solicitations, how the Kingpin was colored before they got going with the actual show. There was a lot of pre-production art going on. The Kingpin was actually sporting purple pants, the blue ascot, and the orange vest with the white jacket. So yeah, he totally does fit the old Toy Biz motif of the original colors before they sort of revamped the show a little bit. Also, Peter Parker in his uh, jacket right there. If you saw that, there are versions of the Toy Biz Kingpin. Another one comes in the Venom Saga that was a Sam's Club exclusive. There's actually two versions of this pack. The Kingpin's the same in each one, but uh, he has darker pants, basically. But yeah, the alternate version will have the Rhino in place of the black costume Spider-Man. Much like all Toy Biz figures back in the day, they had some sort of gimmick where, yeah, if you push the button on his back, put his arms up, you could knock the heck out of a cyborg Spider-Man. This is a very cool repaint. If you have to have a repaint, at least it's something that's connected with the comics. It has little tidbits here and there of Spider-Man the Animated Series with Toy Biz. So in either sense, yeah, I think you're definitely gonna like this Kingpin figure. Now for this next figure, we're gonna have to get a little negative, and I'm purely talking about the Negative Zone Spider-Man. A very cool, very interesting looking Spider-Man in his Negative Zone attire. And of course, this is based off the Pizza Spider-Man that came out some years back. Even comes with his own slice of Negative Zone pizza, I love that. Assortment of hands, nice articulation, really nice paint, nice black and white. Nice spider symbol on the back. Now, Negative Zone Spider-Man never actually appeared in Spider-Man the Animated Series. However, he did show up in the last wave of the Toy Biz Spider-Man the Animated Series line in that this was the last wave that really had any type of characters that once appeared on the show. Now, they did include comic book characters, of course, but the web catcher Spidey from the sneak attack flip and trap wave had actually three different Spider-Mans, regular, a shadow Spider-Man, and then also this negative zone. And we will be taking a look at the very last wave coming up real shortly. And yeah, you can see how they differ. Not too much, but yeah, in some ways, one has actually got more detail while the other one's got a heck of a lot more articulation. So in that sense, you get a nice smattering of alternate hands, you get a pizza slice, and you got one cool looking Spider-Man. And next up, we have the figure that really says it all in the sense of, yeah, I, uh, this is Felicia Hardy, the black cat, based on her appearance from Spider-Man the Animated Series, with one minute key detail that she didn't have in the cartoon show. But still, really, when I saw the figure reveal, I was like, wow, that's, that's Spider-Man the Animated Series right there. And she's got a great head portrait. She's got the collar, which is nice. Except that she has purple eyeshadow. To be a stickler, she didn't have that in Spider-Man the Animated Series. But she does come with a nice looking whip. It's not ideal. But really, the accessories for this figure are not ideal. Same with the articulation. It's a little wonky here and there. But she does come with a black cat. And I would say, honestly, when I think of the black cat, the actual character, she's not really doing the whole Catwoman thing. So in that sense, it's kind of, yeah, it's more suited for like... Mad Jack McGuire. That's his cat. That's how I saw it. But she goes really nice with Spider-Man, you know, traversing the rooftops with him. The spider, right? It looks fantastic together. Her old Toy Biz counterpart, which is actually ironic in the sense of she's showing a lot more skin, so to speak. Whereas on the TV show, yeah, she couldn't. They had to, you know, the, the black cat, you know what I'm talking about. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. But in either sense... Yeah, it's funny the new Marvel Legends actually covers up where the old Toy Biz one was like, here you go. While I don't care for the accessories, Black Cat's a nice figure, and she's definitely based on Spider-Man the Animated Series. And now with this next figure, you can just hear over and over, bring me pictures of Spider-Man. You know, if only if only he had a, a cigar, right? Yeah, I'm sure Disney, Marvel... Hasbro, they would sure do that, right? But we got J. Jonah Jameson, good old JJ Picklepuss, 
And he's, he's pretty cool looking. I'll give it to him all day. It's a very simple figure, but in this sense, it works for J. Jonah Jameson. He's got a nice tie. He's got the vest. Very much his old school comic book look. Nothing even remotely close to Spider-Man the Animated Series. But he does come with several hands. He's got the pointing hand. He's got newspaper holding hand. He does come with an interesting Daily Bugle Spider-Man sheet. It's actually made out of paper. But if you want to screen grab this, you can see all the funny cheeky things that they put in there. See what you can find, right? Daily Bugle rolled up newspaper. Don't mind that. That's actually pretty cool. I think the face is on. Good old flat top. Nice mustache. He's got that trademark. Just He's just always in a bad mood, you know? Especially with the finger pointing... And he <laughs> yelling at Peter Parker, get out there, find me those pitches. Or yelling at the wall crawler because he can't figure it out. In the old Toy Biz days, well, the Monsters in Mayhem set actually had a J. Jonah Jameson complete with cloth goods. And while it wasn't the best fitting, it was still pretty cool. Wait, can we get away with this? Let's see. Yeah, no. <laughs> but at least you can see what J. Jonah looks like underneath. It's actually a Mr. Fantastic redone. With a new head. Yeah, go figure. There is a later wave, not really, it's still in the vein of Spider Man, the animated series, but not based off of J. Jonah Jameson's appearance. But he did come with a really cool looking Spider Slayer transforming desk. So, yeah, that's a good tie in to old JJ. Nice figure, nice flat top. Can't go wrong with J. Jonah Jameson. Now, with old Quentin Beck here, Mysterio, you're going to get yourself the Mysterio that I think everybody wants, or at least the one that I think of in terms of the comic book. We can say animated series, no, not even, not even close, but it is very much old school Mysterio. And with the colors that they gave him, the black wash on the costume, the nice, really burgundy type cape, the fishbowl has a really nice pearlescence to it. The accessories, same that he came with in the prior release, they're okay, but I really would have liked to have seen something new, something exciting. He's the guy with the projections and all that, but underneath the dome this time around, yeah, okay, I guess it's Peter Parker? What? It's supposed to be Quentin Beck. It's like a hologram looking Peter Parker. Well, whatever it is, it was very anticlimactic to say the least. I was like, oh, that, that's not cool. <laughs> However, in comparing him to the old Toy Biz figures, two in fact, they had a running change at some point. You could see, yeah, the costume doesn't really resemble the Mysterio from the animated series. But, yeah, you know, if you got the 12-inch one, that's actually pretty cool as well. The Mysterio just had a very distinct look to him. So in the sense of the animated series, I'm very much attuned to that look while all still liking this great comic book look for Mysterio. But, hey... Later down the road, you ever actually do Spider-Man the Animated Series inspired designs? Psh, wouldn't mind seeing a nice looking animated Mysterio, that's for sure. Which then finally brings us to the last figure of this wave. Now, I'll be completely honest with you. I'm a little biased in that I'm a huge fan of Cyborg Spider-Man. I have loved the Toy Biz figure ever since I got him way back when. Had no idea about the comic. Had no idea it was a thing. Had no idea how it would mash up the animated series. I'm thinking, oh, this guy's going to show up at some point. He never did. This was never a thing on Spider-Man the Animated Series either. But that look is so killer. I absolutely love this figure. But I'm going to be honest with you. This is like the bare minimum of what the cyborg Spider-Man could be. He's got really nice stitchings here and there. Yeah, he's got the leg wrap and everything, but a little bit more paint would have been ideal. More stitching all over the costume, even if it was just a print, you know what I mean? But hey, he comes with an interchangeable hand. He does come with webbing. The webbing is not my favorite. It's just kind of bleh, you know what I mean? It kind of fits over his hand, it's okay for what it is. In terms of pairing him to the original Toy Biz figures, you can see the detail that the Toy Biz one has that, of course, the new one does not, including this alternate version that came in the two-pack with Deathlock. It just has more scarring of the costume, more stitching, more detail, more everything all over him, including on the arm. I think more paint would have been lovely, but I'm going to tell you again, I absolutely love the look of this character. I love this figure. It is my favorite of the line. So 
that's really going to wrap it up for my look at the Wave 2, quote-unquote, the KB Toys Wave, if you will. All the fan channel ones that are associated with Wave 1, but really became their own thing. I mean, six figures. That's a lot right there. But in seeing all the new retro figures together, it does bring back a lot of memories, a lot of Toy Biz memories, a lot of fun here. Some figures work, some figures don't. But hey, in the sense of looking at them all together on your shelf, that's actually a pretty cool feat, especially if you have all the old figures that you used to buy and play with right next to the new ones. But I'm curious to know your thoughts on this Spider-Man the Animated Series inspired wave. Do you have any of them? Do you need to get some of them? And what are your thoughts on maybe a new wave coming out? Which figures, which characters would you like to see? We know that we're getting web, man, right? Maybe there'll be more on the way. We'll see what happens. So I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, Spider-Man, the animated series, is back on Disney+. Plus. Woof, what a whirlwind of three or four days. Just crazy all over the interwebs. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios. Thank you.